It's a video by Western Lensman on X shared by Elon Musk, the Democrat open borders plan to entrench single party rule. It's a must see. Elon Musk says this is actually happening. The video is quite simple. It explains how Democrats are giving themselves up to 13 additional electoral college votes and congressional votes by bringing in millions of criminal aliens. We've known this for some time. I'm looking at this story. I'm thinking about the lawsuits against Trump, the lies from the media. Trump just filed a lawsuit against ABC and George Stephanopoulos for accusing him of being liable of rape, which is false and defamatory. That's actually not true. But to ABC News, I believe it was ABC News, to all of the millions of people who watch this, this is the world they live in. This country is in active conflict. It's just that conflict changes. I love the video game Fallout. If you've ever played it, there's a famous line from that game. War never changes, but certainly it does. New tools, new weapons, new strategies, new tactics. And perhaps the end result of all of this will be only hot conflict. I hope not. I certainly hope not. But I do not see a path forward. I do not see an off ramp because of the extreme degree of action being taken by the Democrats. It is in your face. It is screaming in your face. I watched a video. I'll record a segment on it later of a homeowner in New York. Her parents died. She inherits the house and she moves immediately to sell it. Squatters immediately take it over. And when she comes to try and actually come into the house, which only not even a month, perhaps later, the police arrest her. That's right. The woman who owns the property comes to find people in her home. She calls the police and they arrest her. This the, it's, the system can't function this way. People of this country are being attacked in every possible measure through audits, IRS crackdown, through uh, ridiculous mandates and policies. Here we are. The Supreme Court recently put a block, just the other day, they put a block on Texas from enforcing immigration law. The Supreme Court says we can do what we want. This country will not exist in 10 years at this pace. Now, I'm confident culturally we are winning. And I think it's it's Elon Musk. It's people like you and me paying attention, talking about this that will push back and prevent this. But I have no idea what to expect in November. I have no reason to believe that the Democrats aren't preparing another shadow campaign. Preparing. I have no reason to believe that there is not an active shadow campaign. That is to say, avoid the double negatives. I believe it is a guarantee that right now Democrats are engaged in a shadow campaign as they as Time magazine described it from 2020. I don't know how this turns out. Let me play this video for you. It's actually quite succinct. It's not inflammatory. It's actually well, well put together. And you can hear it for yourself. The plan, as we've described it from the video shared by Elon Musk, produced by Western Lensman. OK, I got to refresh it. That's the thing about X video. Huh? Trench single party rule. Here we go. The Democrat open borders plan to entrench single party rule, explained in under two minutes. One, flood the country with untold millions of illegals by land, sea, and air from all over the world, enough to eclipse the populations of 36 individual U.S. states so far. Two, prioritize the needs of these millions of non-citizens over the needs of the American citizen, with free flights, buses, hotels, meals, and phones, ensuring their loyalty to the political party that imported them. Three, keep them in the country at all costs, even when they commit violent crime like murder and rape. Attack the language used to describe the criminals, as opposed to the criminals themselves. Slander critics as racist. Four, ensure their privileges are made irrevocable with city and state sanctuary laws that act as population magnets. Codify permanent status and ensure non-cooperation with ICE. Five, count the non-citizens in the census that will determine congressional apportionment in the House of Representatives. As of now, that would equal 13 extra congressional districts, a tremendous amount of electoral power. Six, 
wage a massive, heavily funded lawfare campaign to change state voting laws that legalize mass mail-in ballots, no signature verification, and no proof of citizenship requirements, making it nearly impossible to prove voter fraud. 7. Lock in the permanent voting majority with campaign promises of lavish benefits and permanent privileges, enshrining generational fealty to the Democrat Party. 8. Win elections. 9. Entrenched single-party rule has been achieved. The best part? Your tax dollars are paying for it. I think the important thing to point out is what mostly matters is congressional apportionment. 13 additional congressional seats. And that's based on the numbers from Pew Research. Pew Research says there's an estimated 10.1 million illegal criminal aliens in this country, and they're counted in the census. That's how we know it's 10 million. In fact, it could be more because there's what's called gotaways, people who cross the border illegally but are not caught. Right now, Democrats are claiming they have a border security bill that would end the problem of illegal immigration. And they're correct. It absolutely would. It would end illegal immigration by legalizing it, by making it so that anyone who crosses the border of their own volition without going through a checkpoint or doing any paperwork or any process would be rapidly processed and legally allowed to enter this country. So it wouldn't be illegal anymore, would it? It would codify this as the status quo. Now, the estimates from Pew of 10 million, those are old numbers. By now, it may actually be closer to 13 to 15. We are looking at roughly 16 or 17 extra congressional seats for Democrats to vote as they see fit. You may wonder why it is. Polling seems to show, videos seem to show over and over again that the American people are not happy with what's going on. And they don't like the state of the economy, but somehow Democrats keep winning. The issue is quite simple. In these urban districts where Democrats actually have voting majority, and that's that's fine, they're allowed to. Instead of one congressional seat, they have two or three. And so that one, one city, that one part of New York that should be one vote turns into three. Because when the census happens, they don't ask, are you a citizen or not? So when Democrats say sanctuary city, sanctuary state, as Western Lundsman points out, they create population magnets. They bring these people in. And the reason why I think they're bringing people in en mass right now is likely due to COVID urban exodus. During the COVID lockdowns, people like me actually left blue areas and moved to red areas and intend to vote Republican. I think it's stupid to say blue and red, to be honest, because it used to be different. Democrats used to be red and they flipped it for some reason. I lived in the Philadelphia suburbs in uh, uh, New Jersey in a Democrat district, and I left. Now, that's probably good for them. They're probably happy someone like me wouldn't be there because, of course, I would vote Republican. But many moderates and even Democrats left and moved to more conservative areas and likely will now vote more conservative because they did not like what happened to their businesses, their lives, to their families, to their children, to their schools. This means that when it comes time for the census in 2030, Democrats are in serious trouble. The Democrat congressional, uh, the, uh, the, the congressional apportionment for Democrats will absolutely strip them of their unconstitutional, illicit congressional advantage. So what do they do? Everything you're seeing right now is laying the groundwork for 2030. If there is a census and we stop and deport the illegal immigrants, this con- the Congress will likely have a 20 seat Republican advantage. Because congressional apportionment will be redefined. It would probably reduce the amount of people per district. Right now, I believe it's 775,000. It'd go down. If you were to remove, what are we looking at? Uh, is it 0.3 to 0.5% of the, uh, wow. Yeah, a, a 0.3-ish, maybe uh, around there of the population. That would reduce the amount of people per district, and it would strip Democrats of their fake electoral advantage. Understand this. 
when it comes to electing the president, this is what we're up against. Donald Trump must overcome 10 million votes from illegal immigrants. And I don't mean that illegal immigrants are going to sign a ballot and mail it in. I don't believe that's the case. It may be in many circumstances. Don't get me wrong. There have been illegal immigrants, criminal aliens who have voted. That's a fact. I don't know if it reaches the scale of 10 million. But we are not a direct democracy. Our electoral system does not hinge upon an individual casting a ballot. It depends upon electoral votes. This means it may matter to a certain degree that an illegal criminal alien casts a ballot in, say, California, and then the elector from California gets sent to D.C. or their their electoral vote gets mailed to D.C. Perhaps the real issue is we vote on the president through the Electoral College, which is the appropriate way to do it. Democrats are exploiting this. What happens then is criminal aliens don't vote. And that's silly. Democrats would not give you the opening to track down how they're pulling this off. They've created a legal barricade to stop you from doing anything about it. If it were true that non-citizens were voting in mass, we could figure that out easily. Democrats keep saying that's not happening. They're right. Their plan does not require it to happen. All that is required is that an area of, say, New York, which actually has 500,000 U.S. citizens instead of 775, gets to vote. So if you look at a place like New York City, the way it works with around 13 additional congressional seats Democrats have, it's not so much that New York, you know, there will be one district that's all illegal immigrants. It means that Democrats can pad their numbers and draw the districts. So there may be 50,000 illegal immigrants in one district, 50,000 in another, 50,000 here, 50,000 there. And that means when it all adds up, New York is going to get an extra vote. There's no possible way Republicans can compete with extra votes. Now, if we were to reapportion and remove non-citizens, that would rebalance Congress and it would shift some of those congressional seats, of which there are 435 or uh, right, 435 to Republican areas or more moderate leaning areas. But as of right now, the Democratic Party has representatives that do not represent American citizens. And that is why they have all of these, all these sanctuary laws, which are unconstitutional. And while these Democrat areas are quite literally in defiance of federal law, the Supreme Court blocks Texas from actually enforcing the law. It's on purpose. This country is being gutted and ripped to shreds intentionally. Donald Trump says bloodbath as a reference to the economy and the media marches in lockstep to lie. Now, I don't know what the plan is or why they do what they do. I do, do know that there are a lot of really stupid people who live in bubble world, the bubble of MSNBC and CNN, and they genuinely believe Trump is calling for violence and there's no immigration problem. Stay asleep, America. Your government is in control. Supreme Court blocks Texas from enforcing controversial immigration law for now. Yes, but it's been indefinitely blocked. There is no date at which there's no ruling. They just say, no, 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 we're extending the stay. You can't enforce this law. We'll figure it out later. Texas will likely reject this. Why would any American citizen pay taxes into a machine that is ripping away the future of this country? and the birthright of our children. I mean, the nation's children, right? Gen Z is certainly waking up, becoming more conservative as they're watching what's happening. I give you this warning, Gen Z. You may awaken today and say what was supposed to be our inheritance of this great nation and the American dream is being given away to millions of non-citizens. If you do not do something about it now, if Donald Trump does not win in November, it's not even about November. Democrats may be betting on 2028. Democrats may actually hope Trump wins in November. And Trump, of course, will have to engage in the most, the, 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 the biggest, the most massive deportation uh, plan we've ever seen, operation. So I give you this scenario. 
2024, November, Donald Trump wins. Everyone's shocked. They say, we did it. We won. Democrats, fury and they're scathing and they're seething. Donald Trump then begins a mass deportation program of the millions that were brought in under Joe Biden. Trucks come and pick people up. Buses load criminal aliens onto uh, uh, load, load up criminal aliens and begin sending them back to their home countries. Now, in the immediate. There's there's no real place you can put them. There are border facilities that the Democrats have already called concentration camps. I give you this scenario. Donald Trump wins. When he begins deportation, Democrats in the media say it's Hitler. Concentration camps. He's rounding up our neighbors. These are people you know and you love, and they're being hunted down. Shield them, hide them, protect them. You'll have stories of undocumented citizens hiding in the attic. That's the game they'll play. 2028 comes around. With their advantage, they then win. They run these stories, run this narrative and convince people that Donald Trump is Hitler 2.0 and that it must be stopped. Never again, they'll say. 2030, the permanent political majority is crafted. True Republicans can never win again. True Americans. The fabric of this nation destroyed. The values of the Constitution gone. Vestigial. Part of a bygone era. After Donald Trump loses, or I should say, not, not Trump, but after the Republicans lose in 2028, as Democrats run this narrative of Nazis and Hitler and all that stuff, assuming we get that far, to be completely honest, then the Democrats come in, bring back millions upon millions more illegal immigrants, criminal aliens. The census happens in 2030 and the Democrats gain five to six more congressional seats. And that's it. We look at all these polls and we're like, wow, Republicans are going to win in 2022. And they win a narrow majority, narrow, only only uh, only dozen or uh, was a few seats. And now it's down to only a handful. Because people are retiring and they're leaving and they're expelling George Santos, things like that. Democrats have extra seats based on their population. They claim things like, look at the popular vote. We get way more votes than Republicans. Why are they winning? They have already got untold amounts of illegal immigrant criminal aliens sleeping in airports, in community centers. And you wonder why it is. It's because they want political power. They want subjects. They do not want to actually have to compete with the Republican Party and with Americans who believe in this country and what it means. The goal in the end will be, now I believe the goal is just political power, but the end result will be the shredding of the fabric of this country. Let me show you where we're at. Tyson hiring migrants, says Fox News, that's a lie, while laying off U.S. workers is the decimation of the American dream, top Republican. Why is Fox News calling criminal aliens migrants? Because they're in on the take. This is the plan, baby. They're burning this country to the ground. They say we are the right side of history and they're going to destroy what you believe in. The idea of the white picket fence and the milkman, the paper boy, all of that will be gone. And what you will get instead is enclaves of multicultural democratic institutions. You'll go to little Havana. You'll go to Ukrainian village. You'll go to little Italy. You'll go to little Guatemala and little Barbados and little Haiti, and there will be these neighborhoods in your city where people don't speak the same language. People don't get along. But don't worry. When the conflict happens, the police will come and they'll enforce the law. And that's it. It's the ultimate plan of population dissolution. When you have a population fighting itself, they can't fight you. Many people like to point out that during Occupy Wall Street, it was fairly populist, anti-establishment, until, uh, until identity politics came in. There's a comic where it's a rich man sitting in a fancy room and there's protesters outside saying we are the 99%. The man's on the phone and says, introduce them to identity politics. 
People often talk about wedge issues. I remember growing up, they'd say these issues that we're dealing with, most Americans agree no war. But then you'll get some wedge issue like a tax proposal or abortion. And now we're too busy fighting each other to deal with what's actually going on. That's what they're going to create permanently. People who are American born, seventh, eighth, tenth, whatever generation from this country will be arguing with a guy who just got here. And you'll be saying, this guy is trying to vote away my library. And the guy will be saying, we don't need a library. We need more services for these newcomers. And you'll demand change and the police will show up and say, look, I don't know who's fighting and why. OK, both of you need to shut up and deal with this in the courts. Both of us. What about the people who are supposed to inherit this nation and everything that was built? Why is why are they allowing these people to come here and take from our resources and the hard work that, that we 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 built this country? Our, our, our parents built this country. There you go. That is where we are heading. Now, let me correct this for you. Tyson is hiring criminal aliens while laying off U.S. workers. That's the real story. Tyson says they're going to be laying off more than a thousand jobs and looking to bring on 42,000 criminal aliens. Boycott Tyson's. This is the big story. The next segment, I'll go into greater detail on boycotting Tyson's. We can win this one. At least I hope we can. I think it starts with voting for Donald Trump, but I don't know that we have any good answers. I don't know that one term of Trump can actually solve this problem when you have these evil people that are running the show. They want your life to be worse. They believe they know better than you. These are people, many of whom, not all, but many of whom would love there to be a unified Western bloc like NATO that all falls under one governing authority. And the only way to, to achieve that is to strip you of your ability to influence government. How can you do that? Flood the country with non-citizens. Make you, the Americans, compete against people who aren't from here, who don't care, who just want to live a better life. I can respect wanting to live a better life. But that means when it comes down to it. Think of the squatter. The squatter wants to live a better life. And this is the perfect image the perfect example of what this country has come to. In New York, a woman comes to her home, as I mentioned, and she finds squatters. Those squatters are effectively, in this analogy, illegal immigrants. And she says, get out of my house. And the police show up and say, this is a civil matter. So when the police actually remove these guys, they do. They say, come on, guys, you got to get out of the house. She changes the locks. The man then calls the police again and says, our landlord has evicted us without cause. The police, with smiles on their faces, ripped the woman from her own home that her parents gave to her. They arrest her. I'm going to do a segment on that later, but I feel that is the perfect example of what we are witnessing. So let me leave it here. The next segment, I'm going to be talking about Tyson and the boycott and what we have to do and how we have to build the parallel economy. Shout out to Public Square. Download the Public Square app now. Use it. But let me jump to this next segment. I'll wrap it up here. That'll be at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.